Okay. Ah, yeah, I'm on. Okay. Um, give me a chance to introduce myself. My name is Wilke Trey. Uh, I'm PhD student at the University of Oldenburg in Germany for computational math. Um, most may know me better under my pseudonym Lollydeep. Um, I launched my own crypto project, which is a miner, primarily for Equihash miners, about a year ago. That's Lol Miner. Maybe someone heard of that or of some of my other projects. Um, for example, uh, I wrote the reference miner for another Mimblewimble project called Beam. But don't worry, wrong audience today, I know. I'm branded today and everything today will be about green mining, especially Kukuru and Kukachu. Um, that gives me a good, uh, a good slide um, over to pointing out the difference between the two. Um, John already told just now that um, we need somehow to trim away those edges um, which are kind of dead ends, yeah, that are not connected to other edges, so we have to define what means connection. And for the original cuckoo and for cuckoo, um, we have the classical situation, two edges are exactly then um, adjacent to each other or connected um, if they reach the same endpoint as here, this um, edge B and C, and also here C and E on this side. Um, while, well, this is a standalone edges, yeah, these two are not connected. So, if we would start to trim, um, let's say here on the upper side we would get a trim here on A, and also D would get trimmed away, and E also, but this two here, B and C, would survive because, well, we have two edges arriving here. It's a bit different for the other proof of work for Cooker 2. Um, because there, the edges are grouped into groups of, um, well, not the edges, the endpoints are grouped uh, into groups of two, yeah, neighbored. And here we define um, two edges to be adjacent if the endpoints of them are neighbored. Here, for example, A and B. Yeah? This means these two here are neighbored edges. But here on the other side, where we reach the same edge, um, well, these two are not considered to be edge ascent. This has one big computational advantage, this scheme. Um, in the other scheme, we have for each endpoint to count at least to two to determine um, does an edge connected here get trimmed in the next step or not. Yeah, obviously, we need to count, okay, one edge arriving and it's only surviving if a second one um, is going to exactly that point. While for Cooker 2, we only need to store the information, does an edge arrive or not? Uh, because, well, if it does here and it does here, then we know these two edges will survive the trimming step. So, making it uh, a bit more easier. So, before introducing the new mining algorithm, I will have a short look on the um, already existing ones. First of all, a lean edge trimmer. Here we got two primary components. That's um, a bitmap indicating if an edge at a certain address is still alive, and a node degree map, which is purely, purely binary for um, Kuka2. By the way, all the examples I'm doing now, today, is for Kuka2. So, how does the extra trimming now work? Well, we take those indices here where we got a 1, so the edge is still alive. Um, use our hash function, sif hash, to compute one of the two endpoints of the edge. So, let's say those on the upper side, that's the U side, or, well, on the lower side we have the V side. And, well, we do this for all of our edges, and then we know, okay, to which endpoint do they belong, and mark our endpoint here with an one where our edge is arriving. Well, that's fairly simple. Um, well, after done so, we then next, oh, you see, here some additional edge, um, ones came up, yeah, because, well, we only have a small snapshot of our edges here. 
Um, after done so, we're doing exactly the same again. We calculate the hash, but now we XOR here by one. That means we're switching from our endpoint to the neighbored endpoint, yeah, XORing by one. And then we read back the information from those addresses we have here now. Is there a zero or a one there? And determine by that, is our edge still alive or not? Well, and for those who here read a, a zero, we know, OK, this edge, unfortunately, not survived. And we can mark it here with a zero. So the next iteration, it won't be used again. Well, it's very simple algorithm. And we then continue just with the other side of the graph. Yeah, doing it on the same side again would be pointless. So switching from the U side to the other uh, V side back to the U side, and so on and so on, iterating over and over again. The advantage of this algorithm is it's extremely memory efficient. Yeah, we only need one bit to store the information, is my edge st uh, still alive? And we need one bit on the endpoint side to determine um, is some edge arriving here or not. And well, obviously, it's easy to implement. And the problem is the memory access pattern is something very difficult um, for graphic cards, especially, or for any compute device that's not an ASIC. Well, just because we are randomly accessing um, elements, and also we do not have um, bit addressable space. Yeah, usually, um, on a computer, we only have 32 or even 64-bit um, information. So on a graphic card, we require uncached global atomic operations to write that bit. Uh, because, well, the bit I want to write is somewhere located in a 32-bit element, and we need to write a bit to the right place. And uncached because, well, our arrays, although this is very memory efficient um, for Cooker, for Cooker 2, uh, 31 still both have a size of 265 megabytes. That's far too much to be stored in any cache. Uh, so, and this is making this on GPUs very slow. So for GPUs, there's a, a better algorithm doing so, and this is mean mining. And mean mining works like that. We first of all assume we got some edges. Um, I will speak about the representation of them later. And then we got to look to the top bits um, of one of the endpoint sizes. Yeah, endpoint has a 31-bit address for KUKA2. And um, we're having a look to, let's say, the uppermost 11, 12, 13 bits, something like that, and color our edges by that way. And afterwards, we put them into buckets. Yeah, we're sorting them, doing some bucket sort. This is something working much, much quicker um, just because, well, if the number of, of buckets we uh, handle is not too large, then um, we can have complete cache lines for, um, for the buckets. Or, and overall, we're now using really the level two cache of, of as well the CPU or the graphic cards, depending on what device we execute that. In the next step, a mean edge trimmer almost behaves like the lean one. Yeah, again, we got some small array where we indicate, OK, my edge is arriving there, this one is arriving here, that other one is also arriving there, and so on and so on. Um, the only difference here is now, if our bucket was small enough, uh, then this is again something that also fits the shared, um, shared on-chip memory uh, or the cache, and so can be done much, much better than this um, uncached global memory operation. So next step then is reading again back. Do we have a 0 or 1 at the um, off by 1 endpoint? And indicate by that, OK, these three edges here are still alive. Yeah, while well, these two died. And with them, we now do, um, well, 
part one again. We color them, but now by their other endpoint. Yeah, they still got a second one, and then put them again into buckets, but that's then already for the next iteration. So from properties, well, edges can be represented either by their nonce, so the value we use to generate um, the edges, the two endpoints, or alternatively, we directly can store the two endpoints. Um, storing the nonce, so the input of the hash function, um, of course, uses less bytes than storing both endpoints. Um, but with the disadvantage that we, uh, on every iteration, need to compute the actual endpoint. So um, the more compact representation is more compute heavy, while this one is more latency or memory bandwidth bound. A problem of this is, well, when we now use four or eight bytes per edge, well, obviously we need much more memory um, to do our, our computation. Yeah, ramping up that the uh, first reference minus for Kukutu needing uh, 10.5 gigabytes, or now with some tricks that were later introduced, fit into 8 gigabytes. But still, that's a pretty high barrier for doing um, for doing the mining. So, but well, on those cards, the cards that have enough memory available, we are more than a magnitude faster than the lean miner. Yeah, because the memory access is now coalesced. So the research questions I had was, okay, can we do some, somehow a mix? Yeah, can we do better? Can we incorporate lower-end GPUs? And uh, also, what's with the future where we come up with even higher parameters, um, with even more edges, even more uh, endpoints to mark? What should we do then? And so, well, we came up with the, the idea of the Selene Edge Trimmer. And, uh, well, you already see it's kind of a hybrid of the two. Yeah? We again have here the Edge Bitmap and our Node Degree Map. So this is lent from Lean Miner and the buckets from Mean Miner. And what we do now, now we take only a subset of the edges here and calculate for this subset the hashes, then colorize them as before and put them into the buckets. So this is kind of like what the mean miner did, um, but we generate them from this table instead of having them in arbitrary representation before, and also leaving out some of the edges. Well, then it's clear, well, we're doing exactly the same again um, as before, yeah, we have here a degree map that we have to mark. Only difference is this is a snapshot, a local cached snapshot of our global um, array. So we load it. Then next step, we add information here. Yeah, we add our new arriving edges and then we store it back. And so, well, these two parts only cover a fraction of the edges, like I described before. We left something out yeah, here at the bottom. So what we do now, we iterate this process over and over again until we covered all of the edges. Okay, and then what's done, once that is done, we need um, to trim our edges. And that is done by repeating the first process again. Yeah, we now have this here updated with all the informations we could write, yeah, because in the previous step we iterated over all the, all the edges. And now again for a subset, put them into the buckets. Yeah, that's exactly the same operation, but twice. And then, well, read them and see, okay, this one died, this one died, this one stayed alive. And now something that's special, we put... Hmm, that's interesting. Why this died and this died, but we do that into buckets? Does it make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Because these buckets now are sorted by the nuns. 
They're not sorted by an endpoint, they're sorted by the nuns we had before. And usually when trimming, except for the second round of trimming, um, most edges survive. So we're taking the smaller information, those edges who died, which died, and put them into buckets. That's less information to carry. And afterwards, well, we know these two died. Hmm, let's update our edge bitmap and say, well, you two are not anymore there in the next iteration. So we have to repeat this as well for, um, well, for the complete edge bitmap. But the advantage is, since we only used a fraction of all edges at the same time, we obviously can uh, size our buckets much more smaller. Uh, and this, this means we need less memory on the GPU. And I got some comparison here. For example, taking a lean miner that needs two computes for each edge in each round, for each still alive edge, needs no bucket sort at all and needs very few memory, but here I picked um, AMD Radeon RX 570, for example, because that's available in 4, 8, and 16 gigabytes. And well, we end up with 0.08 um, graphs per second. That's not very quick. Well, if we take a mean miner, that's of course much quicker. This is now for a uh, KB miner. Um, doing an 8 gigabyte variant of the algorithm, um, but ob obviously, well, much more memory, but also much quicker. Um, if we got the mean miner with the two words representation, we need much less compute, and also we will see a certain speed up. For example, here the epic boost speed up on the uh, epic boost miner on the 16 gigabyte cards. Um, they kind of do this two-word stuff from round number two. Uh, in first round, it would still not fit, but from the second one, it does. Well, now the question is, what can Selene do? Well, Selene obviously has some overhead, um, but we can scale it depending on into how many sections um, we divide um, our edges. And well, we have 12 over K gigabytes of edges we use, plus the two arrays we had before. And um, in my experiments, I did an implementation of that with uh, K equal to four on the first two rounds. And afterwards, after the first two rounds, the number of edges decreased so much that we can do a normal mean miner. And um, well, I ended up with at least 0.26 um, graphs per second, so roughly that's approximately 70% of what um, the normal mean miner does. So, but fitting into a 4 gigabyte card. So this also means, well, this kind of scales with um, with the Cooker 2 parameter. This was for Cooker 2 31. Um, this means, well, we could do a, use a higher k, for example, k equals 8, 8, 9, 10, drops us below 2 gigabytes of use. We even can push it, can, um, I think the limit when it stops making fun is 1 gigabyte. And um, by doing so, we even could ramp up to Cooker 2, 32, 33, and 34 on an ordinary customer GPU, and that was impossible before. And this is kind of the novelty uh, I'm presenting here. Okay, how much time I already consumed? I don't know. Let me have some, some final fun, and then we're going over to the break. What does that mean, Sleen? Uh, John also asked me, did you grieve a dictionary? <laughs> Uh, well, I did. Yeah, I did uh, agree with dictionary. I wanted to find something ending with with lean, um, and s because I sort of sliced lean, he later later on came with a better um, with a better idea. We could also have named it clean 
for coal is lean, because in its heart it's a lean miner. But anyways, but does, what, what does lean mean? Well, lean, when we grieve in modern dictionary, it says alternative spelling of slain. What's that yet? That doesn't help me. Okay, but a slain is a word taken from, from the Irish into the English, a cutting tool. Hooray, it's a cutting tool. A cutting tool, well, to cutting turf in the swamps. Um, that's not so great. Um, but it was much more fun googling what's the old English meaning of slain. And in old English, it has one really killer uh, translation, to mint. <laughs> Jackpot, let's take that. Um, the other ones, unfortunately, were not so nice because, well, Slain is the ancestor of to slay. But on the other hand, well, we are violently cutting away poor edges, so it still kind of fits. Yeah. Okay, since I'm the only one not sitting in the uh, FAQ session, I'm the also the only one who was allowed to have this question slide here. Um, we are a bit late, but maybe you got one or two small questions. And uh, yeah. So the point is to, find, is to create an algorithm for low energy use. Is that, is that the pursuit? Oh well, this was more more interesting from from the research uh, research uh, question. Can we somehow do? Uh, cooker to 32, 33 and higher on, on the lower end. Um, but interestingly, this 0.26 um, for 4 gigabyte cards are kind of very close from profitability to um, the Kukaru 29 mining on these cards. Yeah, because that's, is, that is also a bit slowed down compared with the 8 gigabytes. So it's not totally competitive, but already very close. So one indeed can, can use that, yeah. Another short question? Yeah. Can you show the table again? The table again, yeah. Um, no, um, because um, because when when I go back, oh, I guess the most most interesting is is what happens here. Um, I do not really know to which buckets this one will go, yeah? and the buckets here correspond to section here in the node degree map. Yeah. So I need to exactly. I need to have that all over the process to get really all endpoints met by the edge that's reaching it, and this is what I kind of represent here. That I already got some entries here and do a local copy of that before I um, then add the new entries and store it back, yeah, because I, I need to preserve it completely then for the trimming phase. Okay, then uh, if there are more questions, you're freely, uh, you're kindly invited to ask me now during the break. And uh, well, we will now have a short break before the FAQ ses uh, session. It will, will be 15 minutes. Enjoy the evening. <laughs>